Hey, what's going on everyone? It is Caleb and welcome to the world's greatest Python series in the world. And we're going to go from absolute beginner all the way up to working effectively as a Python developer. So if you're brand new, this is the place to start. And why is this the world's greatest series you might ask? Well, here's three reasons. One, all of the code we go through is up online for you to reference. So you can go in here and there's just hundreds and hundreds of lines of examples that you can copy and use in your projects or just to learn or whatever it might be. So everything is up there for reference. So that's the first reason. Second reason is that this course is completely free. So all of it's up here on YouTube. And third reason, best of all, is that if you watch at least an hour of this course and you're not crazy satisfied, then we offer a money back guarantee. Just leave a comment in the comment section and there is a there is a refund fee. However, besides that, everything in this course is just fantastic. So where do we even begin? Well, first, here's our sponsor. Do you need help advancing your coding skills? Check out my new program, Code Breakthrough. Code Breakthrough offers hands-on learning with Python and data structures, algorithms, and interview challenges. With a supportive community and regular new content, Code Breakthrough will help you get hired or advance your career. For a limited time launch special, use the link in the description to get 20% off your subscription. See you there. So when we are working with Python, the first thing you should understand is that writing it is actually very simple compared to other programming languages. But the programming language is not limited. This programming language is powerful in that you can build scripting applications, you can build user interfaces, you can build websites, and it's actually really popular in the data science and machine learning space. So the options and the opportunities are pretty much endless. And when you get started, you should know that there is an interactive mode where if you look at some of these examples, you type in an expression and you get a response back. And this allows learning Python to be a very intuitive process because you can test things and get responses immediately. However, that's just one way of writing Python. The other is to write it out in a file and then you can run that file and get the results inside of the console. And that is what we're primarily going to be doing is building some more file-based projects. However, when you're learning Python and you just wanna try things out, you can just use the interactive mode, whatever is more comfortable for you. So I'm gonna be showing you how to set up both and then you can decide which one you wanna work with inside of this series. So when you're starting, you wanna to go to python.org and go to downloads and then click the latest version now, there is a Python 2. I wouldn't recommend going that route. However, you should know about it. It's the, the, I would say, like the older version of Python. However, some people still use it today, and maybe that's what you'd be using at your work. However, I would recommend you learn Python 3. And whatever version after the 3, don't really worry about it. Just get the latest version. Mine right here is 3.8.2. So I'm going to hit that and start that download. Now, Installation is super easy. You just click buttons and make sure you read all this this really good content here and agree and then install. Now, when this is installed, you're going to default with working with the interactive mode. And that is again where you type in something and you get a response. Then what we're going to do is we're going to later install a, a way a text editor to allow us to work with files. So for now, we'll just start with the interactive mode and just type our first program. So once that's done, we got this new folder inside of our applications and we can go in here and there's this, oh my golly, break my eardrum, why don't you? Sorry about that guys. Go into the idle, click that and that's going to open up Python. So it's really tiny, so how in the world do you zoom in? Go to preferences and I'm just gonna increase this size to like 20. Nope, even more. How about 29? I'm just gonna go all the way up to like 34. All right, hopefully you guys can see that nice and clear. And just to show our first example, you can do something like five plus five, hit enter, and it gives us the result back. So that is your first Python example. And now you can go apply for a senior software engineer position and just let them know you learned everything from this video. They'll hire you, trust me. <laughs> I'm just playing, there's a lot more to go. And hopefully this is exciting because hey, you just made some, some code. So now I just wanna talk a little bit about how to get the most out of this course. Again, the first thing is that all the code is online. And if you wanna find that, go to github.com slash Caleb Curry Go to my repositories and open up Python. 
And in here, we are currently inside of beginner Python, and we're going to start from the absolute beginning here, 01-numbers. So these are some of the examples we're going to be going through in the upcoming videos. And that'll get you started with kind of documenting your knowledge so you don't just forget it all. But I do highly, highly recommend you go through all the examples yourself, typing them out. That's probably the, the number one way to take these concepts and, and these syntaxes that you need to know and putting them in your brain permanently versus just watching the videos. The other thing is if you're struggling or need any extra information on any of these points, the Python website has some great documentation. So just go to documentation and go to python3.x docs. And inside of here, there's a tutorial which will go through all these principles in, in tutorial form if you need something else. If my videos aren't good enough for you, or what you can do is you can use the documentation more as a reference if you need to know any particular way of doing something.